Well, I'm very excited to get started on this project. And before I start introducing guests and uh, working through the interviews that we've come up with, and I've got some great guests lined up already, I'm really excited to do some of those interviews in person and some remotely. I thought I'd do this video, in, and this is twofold. Firstly, a couple of people have asked me about which setup I've gone for, and there's so many options when you're looking at podcasting or making videos for YouTube. So I thought I'd tell you which kit I've decided to go for and why after my frantic research over the last few weeks. And the other thing is to test it. You know, I've got the kit, I've got the setup, so let's give it a go, test it out, see how it looks, see how it sounds, and you guys can tell us what you think. Firstly, and most importantly, my previous trailer was recorded using the uh, DJI mics. The DJI mics are a great little lav mic for being out and about, for doing a little bit of a talking to camera out in the field, but it's not really the right kind of sound for this sort of thing. So after looking at all of the options and uh, weighing up pros and cons and cost, because microphones go way up into the thousands, I opted for the Rode pod mic right here. Now it was a toss up between this and the Audio-Technica AT2040, which is another dynamic mic. And I have to be honest, the reason I went for the pod mic over the AT2040 is simply because I like the look of this one. It's a great looking microphone. Um, comes in a really cool box. Um, it looks the part. It's a sturdy, heavy piece of kit. And I, I think it sounds good. For those that aren't uh, up to speed on different types of microphone, really the two types you're going to look for with things like podcasting and interviews are going to be a condenser mic or a dynamic mic. And a condenser mic tends to be a little bit more sensitive and a dynamic mic tends to require quite a lot more boost and gain, which I'll get to in a minute. And I chose to go for this particular dynamic mic and dynamic mics in general, because I'm gonna be recording in um, a building that people are coming and going, there's people coming and going now. So this is really just gonna pick up my voice and reject most of the stuff around the back of it. I hope we'll find out soon. Things like key taps, people walking around, chatting to each other outside the room, it should all be rejected. So this is a really good choice mic for me. I went for the XLR version of the pod mic over the USB version, the newer version. Um, it's a little bit cheaper, but it does require an audio input. So like a lot of podcasters, I've gone for the uh, Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, um, and I went for the Gen 3. And the Gen 4 is out now, and the Gen 4 is great. Um, it's got a little bit more uh, gain, a little bit more boost on it, um, and it's got some quite nice features. It's got a safety mode where it won't let it peak. Uh, I'm looking at the bars now, and I think I'm okay. Um, but the Gen 3 is a lot cheaper. So for, for what was around £100, around $100, you get the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 Gen 3, which is what I'm using right now. It hasn't quite got enough gain for a dynamic mic. Dynamic mics don't take any phantom power, which the uh, Focusrite Scarlett does deliver. So as a result, they're a little bit more gain hungry. So you need to really pump the gain up. And I was finding that I was at kind of 80 or 90% gain um, on this particular mic. Um, and when you get over 90, there's a little bit of a hiss there. And when you get up to 100%, it's it's quite hissy. So um, I was looking around at options to, um, to overcome this because I know this is a really classic setup that a lot of people use. And everyone's saying, you know, cloud lift, cloud lift, cloud lift. And the cloud lift is like 150 pounds, 150 dollars to, to buy this, this little gain booster, which uses the phantom power from the 2i2 and then um, boosts the signal. You get 20 decibels of clean gain. Brilliant. That's great. But it's 150 pounds. Well, I'm thinking, shall I just return this uh, third generation 2i2 and get the fourth generation, which has got... Um, I think 65 or 69 decibels of, of gain. So it then works absolutely fine because I'm only about 10 decibels off. So I started looking around and I found actually I highly recommend was the Clark Technic CM2. Now this is um, a, a little gain booster, uses phantom power, but it's got um, two channels on it. And I've got a two channel input because I am going to be doing in-person interviews. So I thought this one works really well for me and it was only 30 pounds. So suddenly I've got the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 as my audio input. I've gone for the Gen 3, 100 pounds. Then I've gone for the Clark Technic CM2 um, gain booster, which I'm using right now. You can let me know what it sounds like. I think it sounds fine on the monitoring. And this brought me to 130 pounds total, which is still 
50 or 60 pounds cheaper than had I gone for the uh, the Gen 4, which is selling for around $180 or $200, 180 pounds. Did need another XLR cable, which was five pounds, so that's absolutely fine. But suddenly the kit starts mounting up. Amazing, the rabbit hole you fall down when you start looking at sound kit. And sound engineering is not something I've got really any experience of at all. I've, I've had to do a lot of research over the last couple of weeks, so granted, I, I guarantee I've made some mistakes and um, I'm sure the mastering will be absolutely terrible in my first few episodes, but you guys will have to give me some feedback. Then we're into the next step. Um, what do I monitor on? Because I was using AirPods or just using the speaker on the uh, on the uh, the laptop there. So I've gone for the Audio Technica, the ATH M20X, which is what I've got on my head right now. Um, and the reason I went for these, no other reason than they were really highly reviewed. They were only fifty pounds. They sound great to me. They've got a lovely um, seal around them. I can't hear anything else that's going on in the building. So I'm sure people are laughing at me outside the door chatting to myself in a room which is one of those odd quirks of podcasting isn't it you're just sitting here talking to yourself Um, and then onto the lighting background lighting um it's an led strip of lights which was 20 pounds from tesco um plugs into the mains multicolor. it's uh, connected to the wi-fi it's uh connected to all your smart apps as well if you want so if you've got smart home this will um go into that and you can do all kinds of quirky colors but i quite like the blue so i imagine it's going to stay like that and then finally for the for the main panel light my key light up here so a really nice soft panel light and these were about 50 pounds each um it's a very hard one to remember so i'm going to read this off which is the Relano plv s192 and i got two of these so when i'm going to be doing in-person interviews we can have one of these key lights on each of us i've got a couple of mic stands table mic stands and i've got two of these rode pod mics as well so i think that this is going to be a really nice setup for me it sounds good so far i'm recording everything straight into the laptop um, i'm actually using my iphone um, as a camera i'm recording this at 1080 um, just for file size because this is really an audio first podcast rather than audio video but this is going to go on youtube there's going to be some clips cut out of it as well um, i've got the iphone 15 pro filming this all at 1080 um, and i think that looks absolutely fine i'm, I'm going to be filming on dslr when we go out on location because we've got some great studios great location spaces for our guests um, i'm going to be shooting on a 5d mark 4 and a 5d mark 3 um, at 1080 and then knocking that together in uh, premiere pro um, using the multicam feature i think it should be quite an easy edit but uh but f- for the sake of uh, these one-to-ones and and just me casting like this um, the iPhone does a perfectly good job, really easy to just transfer that straight over. I've got a, a MacBook Pro, which I can just airdrop this straight to, edit it, stick it back on the phone for social media purposes. This really is a very, very simple setup. Um, in terms of what I've got on my desk, I've got um, my MacBook, I've got a second monitor, a tripod there with an iPhone on it. I've got a tripod here with um, a panel light on, a boom arm, um, which was the cheapest boom arm on Amazon. I was looking at them. Um, I knew that the pod mic was coming in a little over one kilogram. So I got a boom arm that had a good set of reviews um, that was uh, load rated to two kilograms. It was as simple as that. And just one quick top tip when looking at Amazon is something I absolutely swear by when looking at the products. I don't just look at the star rating. Um, I have a look at some of the reviews as well, but I, I try and um, look at the ones that have got the most reviews. So not just a star rating. I'm looking for things that have got over a thousand reviews because you know it's not just bots. You know it's not just someone's friends putting them in there. Um, and lots of reviews with pictures and uh, and videos of them using it. So this boom arm was, I think, 21 pounds. It was super, super cheap. Um, the Rode Pod mic has got a built-in mount. It's supposed to have a shock mount on it, but um, if I tap the, uh, the, the boom arm or the mic, you'll be able to hear that. So it says it's got a shock mount on it and it says it's um, it's got a... a a little bit of a filter to block the plosives but I, I think I'm probably going to get um, a bit of a, a, a block on this because you can yeah it really does it really does peak and yeah it definitely is a shock mount on this so there's some other things to look at but I, I'm really happy with the setup I think it sounds good I think the videos look good I'm just in my office sitting here at my desk um, with a light a mic a laptop and it's working really well for us so that's a quick rundown of my setup, why I chose the things. I'll pop some Amazon links down there. They won't be affiliate links because I'm not that well established or anything yet. They're just the links to the actual things that I bought. If you're interested, if you're interested in setting up your own podcast, um, this has worked really well for me to set up my kit, to get a feel for what works, test everything out, and I'm going to see what it looks like on the computer and hopefully you guys enjoy. So this is my podcast setup and uh, I'll see you soon. You can follow In Conversation with Brad Wenders wherever you get your podcasts. Also, Brad Wenders on Instagram, X, Twitter, and on YouTube. I look forward to seeing you soon.